My name is Elise Wild, and you are listening to Women's Lifestyle Magazine Inspired Voices. In this episode, I'm joined by my very dear friend, Brooke Jevix. Brooke is the development director at Degage Ministries, which if you've been downtown Grand Rapids, I'm sure you've seen it. It's on the corner of Division and Cherry. Degage is a ministry that serves more than 500 people a day. Um, they provide... Uh, many of whom are uh, homeless, although Brooke um, makes sure to emphasize that not everyone that Degage serves is homeless. Um, At Degage, you can access uh, laundry services, meals, a shower. You can get a P.O. box to get your mail. They help you obtain a state ID if you don't have one. And um, they offer just a ton of services. They even have... um, uh, legal services for free once a month where people can come meet with an attorney to talk about any legal issues they have going on in their lives. Um, but one of the things that Brooke always makes sure to emphasize is that what Degage really gives people is connection and how valuable human connection and respect, what a gift that is to give somebody. And that even if We feel we have nothing to give. We could always give the gift of connection. Now, Degage is an essential service, so they are open right now. 500 people in our community depend on them every day for basic services. We talked to Brooke to get an inside look of how things have changed for the staff and the patrons of Degage during this pandemic and the things that they are doing to um, keep each other safe. Talking to Brooke is always such a joy. She's a really inspirational person and she's the absolute best ambassador for a place like Degage. So I hope you enjoy my conversation with Brooke. I certainly learned a lot and was definitely left inspired. So without further ado, here we go. Um, It is a privilege for me to serve our community as development director at Degache Ministries, where I have the privilege of working with the community at large, um, with individuals, with businesses, with churches, and bringing everybody together to uh, raise the funds needed to operate annually um, and, and be a place, a safe place for men and women facing homelessness to come and have community and have food and shelter and resources to transportation and medical support and um, finding houses and jobs and, you know, all of, among many, many other things, laundry and and, um, showers. And there's there's a lot of things that we do, but that is specifically what I get to do is bring everybody together to to help us um, provide that, those services. I love it. It's one thing that I learned, um, about Degage when you and I met last year is I just didn't quite realize the scope um, of the things that you guys provide or I didn't necessarily realize either when you are in a situation where you're, um, you're, you're not living in a home where you're homeless, all the things you don't have access to. Um, yes. And that you guys step in to provide that, like, as you mentioned, like laundry, mail services, um, or you can have a mailing address, um, just like, uh, showers, just all this stuff that, um, I don't think until you stop to think about it or until you go to a place like Degage, you don't really realize how, um, how little you have in the way of, um, just day-to-day functioning. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely right. So what is, um, how many people does Degage serve typically? Um, yep. Tip, I was going to say, typically, uh, we serve about 500 people every single day uh, in our buildings look you know for yeah for some from some for some sort of assistance from just needing a place to be a place to belong in a sense of community to needing a, a state id or needing help to, to get back in the workforce or you know for breakfast or dinner or a shower or among many many other things but yeah about 500 people every single day so life has changed for everyone in the past couple of weeks, whether people are working from home, whether their kids aren't in school, whether they're unemployed, whether they're working in the healthcare system and they're continuing to go to work. How has life at Degage changed for staff and for neighbors? Yeah, such a good and important question, right? Um, things have changed da- daily for everybody right now. Um, 
one of the things that I that I think is important for the community to know is we do on average we don't we do not only serve people facing homelessness. We are surrounded by um, dwelling place properties on South Division, and we firmly belong, believe that um, it's important important to have housing and that we, we're, we're striving to get people into housing, but it's also just to have an address doesn't mean, and, and to check a box that somebody has housing doesn't mean everything's fixed, right? So yeah, it's so important it's, for yeah. people, right, people need a place to belong, a sense of community, um, human interaction, right? So we often have, so when you hear that we're serving 500 people a day, we often have a lot of people in the building um, from the neighborhood that, that had me that sense of belonging and place to be. So um, we, we are, our services, the, the amount of people we're seeing every day has drastically changed um, within the building, of course, because we, we are still, um, we, we need to make sure that it's a safe place for everybody. We, social distancing is um, an executive order right now for for us all to be helping for the greater good. And so we take that very seriously. Um, our buildings continues to remain open. It's just, we have to obviously watch how many people are in the building at the same time so that they can keep distance among themselves and keep themselves um, healthy, mm -hmm. just, just like all of us. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we are still serving hundreds of meals. We've had to um, our dining room is open, but again, we can only have so many people in there at a time. So we're maximizing our space while um, respecting the social distancing orders. But we are still, we've had to move to to-go meals. We're serving hundreds of meals every day. We are serving um, a hot breakfast and a hot dinner every single day to anybody who needs it. Um, the shelter space is, people are... What, what's so amazing is to watch everybody watching out for each other. So people are coming in for shelter space. Um, people from the neighborhood are still coming in to have that sense of community, but they're all being very mindful of, did somebody else get a turn? Is it, do I just need to take, to take my, make my, t my visit be a certain amount, you know, mm -hmm. certain amount of time so, to allow somebody else to come in and get, get a break from the outdoors. Um, we are still, our laundry services are still going, our showers are still going. Um, we have drastically increased our services to the women that we support in the Open Door Women's Center. We have gone from, we have gone to 24 seven care. So the women that are in the shelter do not have to, don't, don't leave throughout the day. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, isn't that super yeah. special? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, it's just really proud of our staff um, and good grief. I'm going to, this has been, it's been exhausting. I'm not going to lie about that. So I'm going to get choked up during this. Um, our, we've had to cancel all volunteer opportunities and we rely on 30 volunteers every day for daily operations. Oh my goodness. It's, we don't, right. We are, are um, that's a huge loss. It's a tremendously gigantic loss for us. Um, and to continue to maintain the services that we're maintaining and then increase um, services for the women that are staying in the Open Door Women's Center is a tremendously huge step up in commitment from staff to fill those gaps, right? So um, it's just, so it's, there's a lot of staff that are working, uh, obviously, um, that only essential staff to support those services are in the building. Um, but everybody, just to watch everybody stepping up and uh, maintaining essential services, because we are certainly essential service to hundreds of people that, that need a place to go and be and, um, you know, may, maybe only have a couple of articles of clothing that belong, you know, that they're carrying around on their back. And they need a place to be able to keep themselves and those those items clean, so so that they can protect themselves as best as possible and stay as safe as possible during these times. So um, it really sounds yeah. like you guys are quite successfully adapting to this situation with um, a drastic reduction in your resources. I mean, 
to suddenly not have 30 volunteers a day. That's, <laughs> Every day, I know. That's huge. And Isn't it remarkable how, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm going to say that it's, that's, that's also, um, the, the men and women we serve are so remarkably resilient and strong and courageous and brave and positive and helpful. It's just, we already knew that, right? It's, it's really, it's, it's already how we operate, but the people we serve are, are just are just side by side with a six feet distance <laughs> right that, now. It sounds it's like helping to. Oh, go go ahead, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, no, it's okay. It's the same. They're just side by side as, with 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 social distancing um, uh, behaviors, just rising to the occasion right along staff to help and help you know to, to watch people the men and women we serve who need help but to even watch people you know watch them rise up among themselves mm -hmm. to say no i i can help i can help too and i can help better than than this neighbor and this because this person needs us even more you know it's just it's so remarkable it's so remarkable to watch and we are just so blessed and so privileged to to work with the men and women we serve in keeping things um we have we have been very resilient and very effective in how we've adjusted but um i i have to, it would it wouldn't be right for me to not acknowledge how the men and women we serve have come along you know we've we've moved to cleaning services more than every half an hour and it's the wow. men and women we serve that are like, no, nope, keep that right out. You know, they, they, they've encouraged, they're like, let's keep one right here. Let's keep one right there. And everybody's like taking over a corner of the building to keep everything going. And it's, it's, there's nothing more I can say than it's, it's remarkable. We were, you know, discussing before I started recording that one of the strengths of our community is the fact that people always want to help in times like this. And it's really inspiring. <laughs> for people that um, are in the position that the neighbors that you serve are and that maybe have very little in terms of um, material items or, or stability or structure, and they get that from Degage, that they can identify ways that they can help and they want to help. And That's that, right. And, and, and I, you know, as you were talking, I, I, I fully believe you when you say like, you guys would not have been able to pivot so successfully had the neighbors not the have you guys had you guys not already established this like collaborative relationship with the people that you serve already because that's how i see degage is this collaboration between you guys and the neighbors and you guys that's exactly that. right so that's um, exactly right so you know congratulations on being able to do that. And that's, that's really inspiring. And I think that's something that, um, you know, a lot of us need to hear right now or, or take to heart in that it is collaboration that allows us to be successful in this crazy yeah, you time. You couldn't have said it any better. You couldn't have said, thank you for, thank you for summarizing it with those words. Cause that's, that is exactly what's happening. And, you know, we, we reference, um, a really important book to us called Toxic Charity. It's written by Robert Lupton. And in that book, he says this, this really powerful statement that, that says, um, nobody is too poor that they have nothing to offer. Wow. And that is, that is a philosophy that we've adapted well before this situation. Um, but, and it is so true and it is so important. Just like you said, the, there are men and women that we serve that, that um, may not have many riches and materialistic things. Um, they may not be blessed with the same amount of privilege that many of us may have, um, the luxury of experiencing. Mm -hmm. But they have, they have been, they were born with special gifts and talents. And it, that's something that's always been important at Degage Ministries is that's part of restoring hope, right? Is showing someone their true value and worth and that we all have something to give. Um, and you're just, you're, 
we've, I think because we have set that tone and that's who we are anyways, that you just see, you see people really rising to the occasion and saying, yeah, I, I know that I have something special I can do here and I can be helpful in this. And um, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to help make sure that we're still offering these things and I want to be a part of it. And it's, it's cool to, that, that we have had that culture already set and have that opportunity that as volunteers um, are finding different ways to be supportive right now. They're certainly not sitting home and, and not staying connected, but um, to, to keep them at home to help keep the men and women we serve safe yeah. and watching men and women come rise to the occasion and help filling, filling spaces like that is super special. What can the community do to help right now? What special needs does Degage have at this moment? Um, yeah, I really appreciate you asking that. Um, there are there are a handful of very special of ways that we need help. Um, we certainly could. We certainly ask for everybody to keep us and the men and women we serve in your prayers first and foremost. Um, we certainly ask for financial gifts right now. Um, not, in addition to significant adjustments, the loss of the, that, the, that volunteer support of 30 people every day for who work right along staff for daily operations, that's a tremendous loss for us. We also had to cancel our spring events that raises important funds for our women's shelter, our Open Door Women's Center. Um, we are looking at a financial impact of more than $100,000 right now. Wow. Um, so for financial gifts is extremely helpful and important right now. Um, and, and then we have an updated wish list that you'll be able to, that you could find on our website. Things that consist of like ground coffee right now. Um, we're completely, we're completely out of it. And it is, that, that cup of warm coffee for people who are spending quite a bit of time outdoor back and forth and have to, to spend time outside is helpful. You know, they, they appreciate that and they look forward to that. Um, disinfectant wipes and disinfectant sprays. Um, G-rated and PG-rated movies. You know, we've got women staying with us 24 seven. We've extended our hours that were open for men too. Again, we have to be my mindful of how many people we can put in the building um, but you know we're playing movies and we're trying you know trying to offer activities throughout the day um, but there's there are significant ways that people can continue to help us during this time and however you feel led to to join us whether it's dropping off some disinfectant spray or ordering that and some ground coffee from Amazon. It can be shipped directly to us so that you don't have to be leaving your home or you can make a gift online. It's, it's right now, it's super simple and easy. We've, it's right there on the homepage. You can click and any size gift is super helpful. Um, I, I would love to write because of, of the people listening, um, our Women for Dag is J. Uh, group has has uh, we've had a woman step up and say any women that want to make a gift right now she's going to match it up to five thousand oh, dollars so um, isn't that cool so I mean for any woman right now listening um, you know people who have followed your publications and in your digital stories have seen um, a handful of of stories about our women for Degage coming together and, and inviting women to come together to support the women that we serve. And so you're, you can double your impact right now by making a gift. Um, you can also, you know, we're trying, you can send in, send in letters to the women that are staying with us, oh, words that's of encouragement. That's you a can mail, that. yeah, mail in, mail in, you know, cards to, so that these women know that they've, they're not, but there are people out in the community still thinking about them and caring about them. You can make lacquer decorations um, with words of encouragement and inspiring thoughts and prayers, and we can put those up on their la people's lacquers, everybody's lacquers. You, you can't access it as frequently all day long but because, because we want everyone to be able to get in and have a turn, but la people can still get in and access their lacquers. So, you know, with your kids at home, those are really special things to make homemade cards and lacquer decorations and send those in for 
so that the people that we serve are hearing from other people. That's a super special way to support us right now. That, that would be a wonderful family activity. And one of the things I've always have liked about Degage is that you guys always have emphasized that you, everyone has something to give. And yes. that most important thing to give is connection. Like you guys have always put human connection at the center of how you serve yeah. people. And um, I think, you know, more than ever right now, those of us who are uh, blessed with having an abundance of connection in our lives, suddenly finding ourselves without it or yes. with it less, maybe we can identify with that a little bit more than we would have been able to before um, in regards to the people that you serve. So I, I love that encouraging people to, to send letters and, and decorations and just, um, you know, just some goodwill and some, hey, I'm thinking about you, we're in this together. That's that's a great suggestion. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you for saying that. And you know, I, um, that, that's beautiful what you just said, that we're all seeing how the change of connection impacts us. Yeah. Um, that was, I, I really appreciate you uh, reiterating that. That's, that's awesome. And it is, it is so true. And in the center of it all, it's, it's people helping people. It's um, something that we've always said, but we're really saying strongly and boldly right now is we're, we are in this all together. You know, yeah. a, a virus doesn't know the difference between a, a financially rich and a financially poor person or a materialistically rich or a materialistically poor person or a person with great a lot of connections and a person without a lot of it, it knows no bounds right it, um and we're all in this together and we're stronger together that's something and that is you're right that's who we are at Decage and um you know I, I walk I took a walk the other day and it's so cool to watch all these people having all these positive sidewalk chalk messages and everybody reaching out and finding special ways to connect and stay connected with people. And that is exactly what we, that is exactly why we are, that what we do at Degage is, is being there to be a connection for another human that has great purpose and great value. And um, we're just so grateful to be able to share our story with all of you today and invite you to be a part of that. Um, that connection and spreading love because the greatest thing we can do for one another is love each other. That's very well put. I think that's a good note to end on. Is there anything else that you want to say about Degage or about your experience right now? No, not, no. Thank you for this time and for letting us share. I just, like I said, invite everybody to join us and loving one another. And we look forward to, to working with each of you. Thanks so much, Brooke. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Brooke. I always, always love talking to Brooke. She and her colleagues that work at Degage really have such a great amount of respect for the people that they serve. And right now, as we are all experiencing unprecedented levels of anxiety, I don't know about you, but I am, and you know, struggling as each day looks different than the next and our immediate future is really unknown. Um, that that it, it can be important to remember that our struggles are relative to what's going on in our life right now and our anxiety is relative to our situation and um, there's a bit of privilege that comes along with that reminder. I hope that my conversation with Brooke really impressed upon you not that there's always someone that has it worse than you but that there's always something we can give. And that's what I've always gotten out of my conversations with Brooke. I've always seen Brooke approach everyone, especially the population that she works with, with such dignity and such grace and such respect and such kindness. And even if we're feeling like we don't have a lot to give right now, um, I guarantee you that you do, even if that is just calling someone and asking them how they are or writing cards um, with nice messages to hang on the lockers at Degage. You know, there's always something we can do. Um, not all of us can make a financial donation right now. A lot of us are really concerned about our finances. A lot of people have young kids at home and aren't able to spend a day volunteering to help those who are in need right now, and that's okay. It's okay if you can't give those things. You can still give something. And I think 
there's a lot of value in reminding ourselves of that right now and that no matter how we feel about what's going on, you know, a lot of us are feeling really low and scared and anxious or ashamed um, for not preparing for something like this better, um, that we still are worthwhile and we still are worthy and we still have something to give. Thanks for listening and please keep your eye out for more episodes. We will be putting out a podcast each day. We have some really exciting interviews coming up that I personally am really looking forward to. Um, And please stay in touch with us if you have any ideas for a podcast or anything that you'd like to, anyone you'd like to hear from that we haven't interviewed yet, um, you can email me at elise at womenslifestyle.com. To get connected with us, please visit www.womenslifestyle.com. Sign up for our newsletter. Um, Keep an eye on this Facebook page for more podcasts to come.